Whitney Shattuck from the First Grade Roundup. I'm talking about my RTI Intervention Data Grid product, um, which is on Teacher Pay Teachers now um, at the First Grade Roundup store. Um, love this document. It's rocked my world as far as intervention is concerned. Just started using this one this year, and um, it really helped organize everything. It helped me be a better uh, teacher in the classroom, as well as um, be a better intervention teacher for um, our grade level as well. Um, also, on, as a side note before we start, I have a huge blog on um, the seven mistakes that schools make um, with intervention. Um, these are mistakes that I've made, um, that my team's made, that I've seen others make, um, and I've learned from. So um, I'm sharing those over on the blog for you if you want to check those out. Um, we're going to go over how to use this document because this is um, really a simple document, but it um, has, there's a lot of potential with this document. So I want to kind of go over the process of how we use it. Even though it looks like it's simple, there's really a lot that goes into it in order to be able to use it effectively. So let's get started. <clears throat> Alright, so this is the document. Um, you'll notice, first of all, let me get back to that. Whenever you um, download the product, you'll have this page right here, and there'll be two files, one for the instructions and one for the intervention grid. Um, I've, uh, all you have to do is click on those. Once you click on those, you will get a, um, f a screen that looks just like this, and it says copy the document. Yes, you want to make a copy. That's just to keep you from changing my document. And then once you do that, then you can go right here and it will actually say, I'm just going to type it, copy of intervention grid template and then you'll just change it. Um, it will be useful for you if you will just go ahead and at the end put your name on it. <clears throat> um, that way you can identify as yours um, or your grade levels because you will um, most likely have more than one intervention grid um, going at the same time and we'll talk about that here in just a second okay along with this product um, you get the videos um, which you can watch on YouTube for free without purchasing the videos or without purchasing the product but um, I've also got some written directions um, that have got basically six steps on what to do it's not real pretty looking but it's got all the meat in there um, if you need it um, if you're better with step by step but this video just kind of gives you a visual um, just so you can see how to do things <clears throat> okay, so the first things first, um, you're going to assess your kids. Okay, so this is not anything, what I love about this document is it's not anything extra. Um, you're not doing extra assessments. You're not having to make up an assessment that you weren't going to do, but now you have to do it just for intervention. Um, you're just using assessments that you're already doing um, at the beginning of the year. Okay, now another product that I have is my data wall. Um, let's see if I can get to that. That is, um, that I've already gone over in some of the other videos that you can see in my, on my YouTube channel. Um, that's going to have all of my data that I'm collecting as I test. So whenever I test in August on their reading level, I'm going ahead and filling that in. Once they take their MAP scores, I'm filling that in um, and all of that good stuff. So I've got this document, and that's really just for me or for my administrator to turn in so I can look real quickly at, a, at, a, at one particular item, how a kid's doing across the board um, for all of these areas. Okay, this document is a little bit different, and I know it does seem like it's um, double work. You, of course, don't have to use both of them, um, but I like the different looks that they each give. Okay, so you're going you're gonna to assess your kids at the beginning of the year with a whole battery of district assessments, classroom assessments, whatever you want to do um, for your students. Okay, and you're going to add it to your data wall, okay, or whatever system you're using. Okay, which, by the way, is not part of this Intervention Grid product. This one's sold separately in my store. Okay. Um, then what, you're, what I like to do is do my data wall first. Okay. Get that all filled in. And then I like to go through here and I like to say, okay, let's fill in my grid. Okay. So let's just go um, write down these areas. These areas are the areas that my team um, used 
for intervention, for grade level intervention during the year. We didn't use all of them all year long, but we did, this was basically the setup, okay? So, um, you, I'm obsessed with color coding, for those of you that don't know, love it. Um, so I use it whenever I can. So I've gone in rainbow order from the most critical to um, the least critical area extensions for your extension kids, okay? This is what my team decided on. You can change this. This is the cool thing about this document, okay? So if you don't like phonics, just highlight it and right click and delete it. It's gone, okay? Um, if you want to change phonics to um, something else, that you, if you're in kindergarten, you want to change it to, to just letter names and do uppercase and lowercase or letter sounds, um, then you can do that. Um, however you want to do it. If you need to, if counting you think is super critical, okay? What we did here um, is we just identified different areas that we already assess district-wide or classroom-wise, and we said what is the most critical area for the most foundational skill for a first grader to have? Okay, and we said, first off, that's phonics. Okay, then after that, can they apply those phonics in their reading? Then can they write? Okay, then we said math. Our school had decided um, last year that literacy was going to be our first focus. And then if a kid did not need literacy, then they could get math. Um, I know some schools are math first focus, <clears throat> so you may need to switch this. You may need to move your math up here to this orange level and then do literacy after that, and that would be totally fine too. And then, of course, you've got your extension kids, okay? So every kid is going to fall somewhere on this grid, okay? Some kids, some sweet little Johnny boys, as we all know and love, are going to fall in every single area and that's okay too okay what's important is that you put them where they belong okay so let's say that I am um, putting my kids here and and let me back up for just a second this red level area up here tier 2 program that is something that your school or your district will decide in order for a kid to be considered tier 2 so every kid is considered tier one in the classroom. And then if they need additional help outside of the classroom, um, whether that's like back in the old day, reading recovery or um, Title I help or <clears throat> um, Success Maker or Lexia Lab or whatever program that you have that a kid needs to be pulled out. We're not talking about special ed, just pull out for extra um, small group intervention. That's what this is right here. Okay, so the school that I was at last year um, used Lexia. So I would be putting that right up here um, because that was our tier two. I probably would even leave that tier two so I knew that that's what it was. Okay, these just happen to be the times that our kids went to um, Lexia, and so you could decide, you just decide as a team who goes what time. That's not necessarily important. Okay, so um, our kids, your district or your school will decide what criteria your kids um, need to meet in order to be a tier two kid. In order to be a tier two kid in first grade at the school I was at, you had to fall um, below in ITBS scores, which they didn't take in kindergarten, so we couldn't look at that, or they had to fall below in their reading level and in their map score. Okay. So really what we focused on here was kids that were below um, the benchmark range in MAP score. Not the one benchmark level, but the, there's an actual range of points. Okay, And those kids um, got Lexi at the beginning of the year. And then after that it kind of changed. So what I would go ahead and do is um, just type the names of my um, Lexia kiddos. Okay, and I'm just putting them, it really doesn't matter what box they're in um, for now for that. They're just my tier two kids, okay? Then I'm going down here, and I'm going to, we have a phonics assessment we use with the benchmark phonics program called QPA. And so I would just go ahead and type in my kids, and then there's poor Cooper. He doesn't know his letter names either, so he's going there. And guess what? Since he doesn't know his letter names, he also doesn't know his letter sounds. And you better believe if he doesn't know his letter sounds, he cannot read VC and CBC words. So sweet little Cooper is going to be going on all of these because he can't do any of that. Okay? And that's okay. 
and you'll see why um, later on. Okay, so we talked about that these go from um, most critical to least critical from up, uh, from top to bottom. Also, they go within that category from left to right, uh, most critical to least critical. Got to know your letter names and letter sounds before you can read um, words. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fill that in um, with however, wherever my kids are. Okay. We're just, I'm just showing you some examples here. Okay. Um, and then if you have a kid that's not going to fit in one of these categories, that's totally fine too. Okay. It's possible that um, Smarty Pants Tyler is not going to fit. That's my brother. He is super smart too. Um, is not going to fit in any of these categories because, you know, he's reading like two syllable words already at the beginning of first grade. That's totally fine. He's just not in a box. Don't worry about it. I'm going to do the same thing with my reading level. Now, Cooper is level A, okay? So he's not going to go on B, okay? We stuck sight words here between level guided reading level B and C because we just felt like kids needed, these were kids that needed some sight word push before they could get to C. Again, totally customizable. You do it however you want to do it, okay? Um, so we've got our kids here um, that... Um, we'll put over here too, okay? And then you've got your writing kiddos. Now, once again, sweet little Cooper is going to need all of these areas in writing because, bless his heart, he doesn't know all of his letter names yet, okay? And that's totally fine, okay? Same thing with the map. I'm going to do all that, and then I'm going to go through here, and um, my extension kids, these are like my top kids that are way, 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 way above in reading, writing, and math, okay? So these are my kids that they didn't fall anywhere here. Weren't in any of these boxes for reading, okay? Not a one. If they're in one box, they don't go here for extension, okay? They've got nothing for reading. They're going to go here. Um, they've got nothing. They're not in the writing box. Then they go to extension writing. They don't have any of these first quarter math skills. Then they go right here in the extension math, okay? Yes, they go in all three for now, okay? Yes, it's possible that this um, that these boxes are going to get real ugly looking and they're going to get real long, okay? And they might go across a couple pages and that's fine. You can tape it together if you need to. Um, the most important thing is that you've got all of your kids um, on the grid before you meet with your team. The first thing that you are going to do is sit down by yourself after you assess your kids and add your kids names to the grid. And then you're going to print that off and you're going to have that um, take that to your PLC meeting. Also remember copyright laws. This is you are purchasing one license for this. So if you want additional license for your team, you will need to purchase them at a discount from my store so that everybody on your team um, can use the same product. Okay, so that's all I'm going to have time for in the first video. On the second video, we're going to talk about, hey, what do I do with this now that I've done this by myself? How does my team actually use this?